Okay, for this effect, we actually need 10 cards uh, randomized. So I'm going to go ahead and do a table wash. And we're just going to mix up these cards to a great degree. Okay, sorry they're going under the paper there. So why don't we go ahead and just um, mix these further here. Oh, I'm sorry, some of them are... Ah, you saw what some of them are, are huh? Okay, so let's go ahead and gather these um, before I lose all of them under, <laughs> underneath. Oh, come on. Underneath the uh, white piece of paper here. Okay, there we go. Very good. So let me just square this up again. Um, so we need uh, 10 cards for this effect. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we don't need the rest of the deck for this. Okay. Um, so we have these uh, 10 cards. And so what I thought we would do is um, kind of mix them a, a bit. Um, and uh, maybe we'll ask you for a few kind of random numbers between, let's say, 5 and 10. Okay, so 7. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. How about another one? 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Let's try a different kind of mixing. I'm going to deal them out into piles until you tell me to stop. And you'll, de you'll determine the stopping point. Now you have to uh, believe that I was going to say stop at random places. Okay, so maybe I start dealing them out. You say stop. Okay. Stop. Very good. Stop. Okay. In fact, this is called the first shall be last, the last shall be first shuffle. Why don't we do one more of those? So you tell me when to stop. Stop. Stop already. Okay. <laughs> stop. Okay. Stop again. One more. Okay. Very good. Okay. And we'll just stack from right to left. That's what that shuffle asks us to do. And boy, does it mix things up. Um, okay, so what we need now is um, I'm going to give you just a whole bunch of choices, okay? And so uh, what I need you to do is I've just pushed off the top three cards and uh, we're going to uh, choose our special hand of five cards each, okay? So which of these three would you like for yourself? This one? Okay. And what about among these two? Which one would you like to keep? The bottom one? Okay. Um, why don't we give, you know, I, I need some cards too. Um, so I'll have you choose for me. So which of these do you want me to have? So kind of use your intuition to try to divine a bad card, I guess. The bottom one? You want me to have the bottom one? Okay. And what about among these two? Which one do you want me to have? The top this time. Okay, now we're back to you. Which one would you like of these three? Middle? Okay, and which one can I have of these three? Bottom? Very good. And what about from these two? Which, which would you like? Uh, top one? Okay, and which one can I have here? Top one as well? Okay. And then we'll go ahead and just deal uh, you first and then me for the remaining cards. Um, okay, so let's see how we've done. Um, so boy, we've we grabbed a you know a bunch of ran uh, ten random cards from the deck, and then from there um, I mixed it according to decisions made by you. I had to choose a couple of numbers. We dealt out those cards, and then we did this first shall be last, last shall be first. In fact, I. I think we did two of those. Boy, those cards are really being scrambled. And then I gave you, a I think it's eight. If you count them, it's eight. I think it's eight free choices for, you know, which card you get and which card I get. In fact, in the end, I did not freely choose any card for either you or me, okay? <laughs> so you chose everything. So let's see, how did you do? How did you do? Ooh, ooh, whoa, 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 you did well. You did well, my apprentice. Isn't that a full house? <laughs> ah, yep, 
you did well. Well, what did you choose for me? A whole bunch of nothing? I don't know, king's okay. Ooh, that's nice. It would be nice to have a pair. Uh, okay. Wait a second. No way! You gave me... You gave me a royal flush? I, the first question is, how did you do that? And the second question is, why would you do that? <laughs> Your full house is a very good hand. But then you end up giving me an unbeatable hand. Why did you do that? And once again, how? How did you do that? Okay, so that is what we're looking at. How did you do that? Okay, and it turns out this way every time if you um, follow the, the mathematics of what's going on. Okay, so here is the secret to this illusion of free choice. Okay, so just a few steps here, so don't be overwhelmed. It, it may seem complicated, but um, you're doing the same thing repeatedly. So that's why it makes it fairly easy, because it's the same steps being done for you and then being done for me. So you really only have to, quote, remember half the number of steps here because you're doing the same thing twice. Okay, so how this works is you need to have your packet of 10 cards needs to be constructed so that at the bottom, if you want a royal flush, let's say, or five, any five cards that you want. Um, so if you want a royal flush like I had at the end, that needs to be placed in this packet of 10. It needs to be at the bottom. And then whatever hand um, you want the spectator to have would go up here. Uh, but I went ahead and made the decision up front that I wanted you to have a fairly decent hand uh, to build up your confidence and then to blow you out of the water with a royal flush after as you've seen your full house. Well, how did I get to this point? So this is where you need to start. So we need a packet of 10 cards, you, have, you know, this kind of construction, whatever hand you're wanting and then the hand you want for the spectator, okay? Well, how did I begin it? So if you think about it, you know, and, and you wouldn't have to necessarily begin the exact same way that I did, um, of course, but, well, if you remember, I dealt, I got these cards by dealing from the top. Okay, so in particular, what that means is um, these need to be in reverse order to what they are right now because when I go to deal them, it reverses their order, okay? So you actually want, quote, the royal flush on top. So that's what I, that's where I started. I started with this exact packet on top. Well, you remember the mixing I did. Uh, what I did is I pushed over, I pushed off a bunch of cards. So I want to kind of keep those safe. And then I kind of went like this, and then I started to mix them, you know, to some degree. And if you really kind of, you may have caught it, but if you watch what I did before, um, these cards did not really get mixed with the others, right? And then I just gathered them up um, over here, and then I just made sure that the cards that were on the top get set on the top, you know, and just kind of set them on top like that. You can even have them kind of fall off, but as long as you put them back <laughs> to where they need to be, uh, you should be okay. Uh, anyway, that's just one suggested way of preserving 10 cards. That's a lot of cards to preserve at the top, but one way is to do kind of a false table wash. So let's see if I succeeded. See, there's the royal flush, and then there's the uh, full house. Okay, so what, whatever um, technique you maybe would like to use to kind of allay the spectator's suspicions that the cards are like set up, which they are. Um, okay, so from here, you know, after it was kind of mixed, I, I thought, okay, well, these are mixed. Let's, we need 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you set these cards aside. They're not needed anymore. Okay, so we have our ten special cards. And then what I did is something called an overcoating. Okay, now an overcoating is kind of a fancy name for dealing out 50% or more of the cards and then dropping the rest on top. 
Okay, so COAT stands for count out and transfer. So if you remember, I asked for some, a couple of random numbers between five and 10. So you, you make it sound like it's just kind of, you know, it's random, just you know, whatever number you would like. And so um, I think the first one was seven. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, drop the rest on top. Well, this idea of overcoating, what it's going to do, and you can see that it's doing it, is if I have kind of a block, if I have the card split into here, it's five, for my royal flush, I want to keep those together. I don't care about the I don't care about the order of them within the five, and I want to keep these five together. When you count out 50% or more of the cards and drop the rest on top, it preserves that relationship. So I think the other number I did was six. One, two, three, four, five, six, drop the rest on top. That will not harm, that will not harm. The fact that uh, the block of one block of cards consists of the uh, full house and one block consists of the royal flush. Now it does switch the order of those, right? Did you, did you notice that this was on top and then this was on the bottom? But if you do it twice, it switches it back to where you had it, right? Um, because we do need. We do need the special cards at the bottom, right? And that's where they started. And then I did this um, counting out of seven cards, it switches the halves. Counting out of six cards, it switches them back to where they were. Okay, so anyway, that, uh, that is a way to kind of uh, supposedly mix the cards because it does mix the cards, but it, it doesn't destroy the portions of this packet that we want to stay in a certain block. And then what I did here was I pushed off three cards. Well, th just think about this. In fact, why don't we go ahead, we'll do all of this face up. So that's probably a good idea. We're, we're going to go ahead and just do it all face up, okay? So remember the top cards are your, uh, <laughs> your full house. Okay, so what I did was, so imagine these face down, but I, I offered you these cards. Well, it doesn't really matter which one you choose because it's one of the cards in the full house. So maybe you choose that one. And then I put these on the bottom. And then if you remember, I offered you two. It's the rest of the five cards, right, that make up your full house. And maybe you choose that one. I put the other one on the bottom. And then I said, okay, well, you have two cards. Maybe I should, you know, get two cards as well. We'll use the same little system. So which card would you like me to have? And you maybe choose the middle one. That's fine. Put the rest on the bottom. And then of these two cards, which one am I allowed to have? And maybe you choose the top one and the other one goes on the bottom. And then if you remember, so what we've done so far, let me just kind of show you here. So we pushed off the top three, you selected one for yourself, we moved the other two to the bottom, we pushed off the top two, you selected one for yourself, move the others to the bottom, so you got those, and then I say repeat steps two and three for the performer for me, and that get landed just here. And then from here, what you do is you push off the top three, and you are free to choose any one of these three for your hand, the rest go on the bottom, and then repeat that for me now, or you know, we, we repeat that process where you choose one of these to go in my hand, maybe you choose that one, okay? And now among, now we're down here, among these two, which one would you like to have added to your hand? Maybe that one, and then we repeat that for me. Which of these two am I allowed to have for mine? And then I put that on the bottom. And then all I did was the most natural thing possible. I just dealt out the next one for you because all of it started with dealing to you first and then the next one to me. And you're guaranteed to get that royal flush which started at the bottom of that packet of 10. Okay, isn't that amazing actually? <laughs> Despite, um, now once again, I didn't 
count, I think it's eight free choices that the spectator's given, and I'm given none, actually. <laughs> and despite that freedom of choice there, I ended up getting the exact cards that I wanted, and they ended up getting the exact cards that I wanted them to get. <laughs> So anyway, that's, I call that the illusion of free choice. And this principle that you can kind of see operating when I had the cards face up, you can use this principle in so many different ways to, quote, force different halves of a packet of cards. So anyway, uh, that, that's how that one works. And um, I hope you... Uh, find that interesting. It really does seem as fair as fair can be to the spectator, but in the end, you get the cards you want. And on top of that, I want to point out that this could have also included a written prediction. So, you know, before we reveal the identity of the cards in each of our hands, I could have brought out a written prediction that would say, um, you know, you will, you will finish with a full house and I will finish with a royal flush. You know, you could bring out your piece of paper, read that. The spectator is going to think, there's no way that's true. And then they're going to look at their cards and then turn yours over and just be blown away, actually. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And take a look at some of the other videos on the Hidden Structures channel especially those under the simple math card magic. And I have many under the extreme math card magic. And they're a lot of fun to watch. Uh, some of the mathematics just get uh, kind of uh, deep, um, but they're fun to watch and they can actually be learned by really anyone. It's just that they may not be able to understand fully why they work. But this one here, I think you can see why it works and you can kind of see the underlying strategy that could be used in different situations. So anyway, once again, thanks for watching.